Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stephen Cord. I will be your MC for this afternoon's program, and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to uh, open my arms and welcome you all wholeheartedly to this afternoon's show. Um, this is the 27th annual celebration of Grandmaster Han's Hapkido School in Southern California. As you, can prob as you will probably notice, we have a table at the end with some distinguished guests and our host, which I would now like to introduce to you all. Um, Grandmaster Han arrived in this country in 1967, and along with a notable career in Hollywood, has operated a thriving school for the study of Hapkido ever since. He has studied Hapkido for almost 50 years holds a ninth degree black belt and title of Grand Master. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the most widely respected practitioner and reigning patriarch of Hapkido the world over, our teacher, our leader, our host, Grand Master Bong Su Han. Born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, educated at Harvard, Boston University, and New York University, our next dignitary is a writer by trade. Having penned 26 books, many of them bestsellers, his skill at communicating is obvious. He has been a martial arts enthusiast for most of his adult life and has trained under the likes of Ed Parker and Bruce Lee. Among the... Um, Books that he has authored uh, outside of the martial category is something called Flight of the Avenger, which is an autobiographical account of President George Bush's efforts in World War II. Um, more pertinent to our category this afternoon, however, is what is widely regarded as a, as a cult classic in the martial arts, called Zen in the martial arts. And there's a brief passage in here which I would like to share with you that puts uh, some perspective on what a dojo, a studio, a school is all about. Quote, a dojo, practice hall, is a miniature cosmos where we make contact with ourselves, our fears, anxieties, reactions, and habits. It is an arena of confined conflict where we confront an opponent who is not an opponent, but rather a partner engaged in helping us understand ourselves more fully. Please welcome a close and longtime friend of Grandmaster Bong Su Han, Mr. Joe Hines. Okay, not only is our next guest a lifelong friend of Grandmaster Han's, he is also basically Grandmaster Han's Hapkido partner since almost the very beginning. He has been and still is the inspiration for five Hapkido schools in Southern California. Please give a warm welcome to Master Kim. <laughs> Videotapes, books, Tournaments and breaking boards, our next guest has done it all and done it all well. Regarded by many as the most influential Taekwondo master the world over, we consider ourselves fortunate to be his neighbor. His international headquarters are right down the road. Please welcome Master He Il Cho. Our next guest has dedicated his professional life to bringing the cultures of America and Korea together for the benefit of all. He is the founder of the Korean American Garment Industry Association and has chaired the Korean American Federation of Los Angeles. Please welcome Mr. Champ Pyong. Started with just three videotapes, Panther Productions now offers 700 dynamic titles featuring all major martial arts systems, starring the world's greatest masters and champions. Holding a seventh degree black belt in Okinawan karate, 
Our next guest founded Panther Productions in 1982, and as you can see, is still going strong. Please welcome Mr. Joseph Jennings. In 1987, I'm told he was the number, one, uh, number seven in the world, ranked tennis player. His wife is currently an actress with two daughters, all of whom currently train with us. I'd like to give a warm welcome to Mr. Brian Teacher. Okay, the responsibility for continuing the mission of Grandmaster Hans Hapkido falls squarely in the laps of Grandmaster Hans' most senior pupils. These gentlemen have been loyal and capable students for more than 20 years. The relationship between them and Grandmaster Han is just as special as any loving father and son relationship, except that theirs is one founded upon the martial spirit. I'd like to introduce to you our most senior, most senior instructors, Mr. Harvey Schwartz. Mr. Mark Gannon. Mr. Danny Cruz. And Mr. Eric Christie. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I'd like to briefly describe what it is you're about to witness this afternoon. Hapkido is literally defined as the art of coordinated power. It is a century old art, centuries old art that traces its roots to ancient Korea. Hapkido emphasizes the harmonization and refinement of the mind, body, and spirit as a means to perfect one's character. Because Hapkido is a multifaceted and all-encompassing martial art, that is, it provides its students with skills in the defense against and execution of hand techniques, garment, clothing techniques, joint locks, throwing, falling, punching, kicking, and weapons. In light of the multifaceted component of Pop Keto, we couldn't possibly show it all to you in one day. In fact, Pop Keto has its one of its 12 tenants, quote, do not think you can learn Pop Keto in a day. It will take your entire lifetime to learn. In light of this, we have compiled examples of various techniques from most skill levels that we think will demonstrate to you the ex how exciting and effective Hapkido can be. We will begin by watching a very brief example of a warm-up session that precedes every formal class. You will see basically breathing exercises where the students will assume a horse stance type position put their both arms out and draw in their arms along with a breath that is designed to draw in the power that is inherent in what we call the universal or external key. Okay? They will then lock this breath in and attempt to mix it with your natural, naturally occurring internal key with which you were born. Okay? From there, they will focus the energy out in attempt to, to focus both the external and internal powers to a desired direction, focal point, okay? After that, they will roll into some very brief examples of stretching and punching and kicking warm-up exercises. Throughout the entire demonstration, you will want to try and detect all the students' use of Hapkido's three principles. Non-resistance, which is also the philosophy of Hapkido, Circular motion and the water principle, okay? I will attempt to see if we can define those together as the demonstration rolls forward. By the way, I just wanted to mention to you all that, let me ask, how, how many parents are here with kids within the uh, age ranges of three to 10? Do we have any parents here in that?
category? Good. How many of you are familiar with the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger phenomenon? Okay. Um, I have watched some of my neighbors, specifically across the street, get involved with, uh, with what they see on TV. It's a very um, exciting thing to watch, but I wanted to cite this example um, very specifically because what they see on TV, if they pick it up and happen to get lucky, can cause serious, serious damage to each other. This is not anything to fool around with, okay? This is one of my deepest concerns when I see the, the uh, TV and mass media portraying the martial arts in this fashion. Someone is going to get hurt. It's not right. This is an institution, like many others, that will help focus that type of concern and correct what I see could be a big problem. So what you see here today, please take with a grain of salt if you try and do it at home, okay, by yourself. It really should be done here or under the super supervision of someone who knows what they're doing, okay? All right. The first demonstration will offer you a glimpse of various hand techniques, punch defense, garment holds that you would encounter as a beginning and intermediate level student. But before that, we will go through our warm-up exercise. on my account.
Sir. 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 Very good. What you just saw, go right ahead. What you just saw usually occurs about 25 minutes into a standard war standard warm up session where we do side splits and front splits, all of those things that you tend to see professional athletes do when they warm up, most specifically gym gymnasts. We're, we'd like to get their flexibility and we strive for it, but you know. <laughs> okay, um, again, as a matter of recap, the first demonstration will offer you a glimpse of various hand techniques, punch defenses, and garment holds that you would encounter as a beginning and intermediate level student. Mr. Schwartz? Group one, line up! Yes, sir! The art of coordinated power. One of our goals is to try to harmonize all of our body parts, 
head, limbs, etc., etc., into one cohesive package of power. Okay? Since some of us are made of smaller bones and muscles than others, sometimes we feel threatened by those that are bigger than us. Okay? Um, for women, this might be particularly true. Okay? The next example highlights options that women have in particular situations. What you will see are two intermediate advanced students, intermediate slash advanced students, denying their attackers the luxury of victory. And then you will see two advanced female students persuading their assailants to look elsewhere for entertainment. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz, if I may, I'd like to ask one quick question on the impromptu side. Um, fantastic job, ladies. I'd like to ask you all one quick question. How long have you been studying this on? For many years, off and on. Off and on many years, OK. Ms. Bauer? Two and a half years, sir. Two and a half years. Ms. Budget? Two years, sir. Two years. Ms. Hoffer? Five years, sir. Five years. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the women. Yes, sir. 
We will see three pairs of advanced red belt men. They'll show you how one might deflect an oncoming punch in six distinct ways. Now here's an opportunity to try and focus in, see if you can determine how non-resistance and circular motion are applied. Mr. Schwartz. Could we all detect some form of circles and water type activity, like their bodies were falling over a waterfall? I saw it. How about you guys? Okay. Um, this next performance puts father and son together in a harmonious duel of familial affection that shows how even a skilled youngster might still just get his way. Aaron Schwartz, now six and a half years old, has been studying Hapkido for two years and trains twice a week in the Junior Children's Program. In September, he will be graduating to the Older Children's Class.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Schwartz family. Okay, our next category um, also gets a title. Um, big black dominoes will now fall relative to the execution of their techniques, okay? Hapkido is generally a defense-oriented martial art. Um, and as we all know, legs are generally longer and stronger than our arms, okay? So if we are involved in a situation where someone is trying to kick at us, we need to make sure we get out of the way, okay? Along with this skill, which is a skill in itself, just getting out of the way, these next, uh, these next folks will get out of the way and counter from a position that necessitates balance and good judgment of distance and timing. Mr. Schwartz. You might ask yourself, isn't it enough that I learn how to defend myself against somebody with effective arms and legs? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay? What if there's a weapon involved? In Hapkido, like most other martial arts, the philosophy of a weapon is this. In the hands of a skilled practitioner, it is simply an extension of what already exists. The only difference between the weapon process and the weaponless process is distance and the contact surface. This next demonstration will try to prove to you that point with a knife.
Patrick should elbow. Face each other. Shoot! And yeah. Line up. Get the audience. Shoot! And yeah. Grandmaster Hodge. Shoot! And yeah. Swiss. Make no mistake about it, if those two gentlemen did not understand how to correctly deal with this situation, although the knife was not sharp on the blade, one wrong move and would be seeing colors on top of cars that we don't want to see. So this, that was a very good demonstration of that. Um, our next category, quote, since Hapkido attempts to perfect one's character through a lifetime of discipline and respect, Provisions were made for the entertainment and education of the more elderly and sometimes handicapped enthusiasts. This next performance speaks volumes about why a lack of respect and courtesy for people seemingly handicapped may not be such a good idea. Yes, sir. Maybe they think twice about assaulting someone with a cane, huh? Okay. Um, back to the process of Hapkido and martial art defense without knives or canes. How do we develop that process as close to reality as possible without hurting ourselves? What we do is suit up head to toe and try to practice, literally, self-defense. Hey, that's true, right up! Yep. Stand back to 
This is a free form process. They do not know what's coming, okay? Hopefully it was evident to everybody that uh, our, two, our two demonstrators had a chance to try and apply those things that they have learned. And hopefully it should also have been obvious that it was done so in the utmost, with the utmost control and within an environment that was controlled with Mr. Schwartz conducting, telling them to break and continue to make sure that no one continues when they shouldn't, okay? There's great care in here taken to make sure that everyone can come back tomorrow and continue training with a smile on their face, okay? Our next category might be titled, Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover, okay? I will let that hopefully speak for itself. All of those folks are currently first degree black belts and have been studying here on an average of six years or so, for an average of six years or so. Um, the next demonstration will be of a similar type. The only real difference now is that it's going to be executed by one person. There will be one defender against three attackers and that defender will be one of our fourth degree senior instructors, and he is Mr. Danny Cruz. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, before we begin, one more note, please. Try and keep a careful eye on how circular and how unrelenting Mr. Cruz is in his pursuit and defense of his assailants. Three against one, ladies and gentlemen. this looks like fun? Anybody? Yes, okay. I happen to agree. As a matter of fact, I happen to agree to the point that I think I'm missing out. So I think it's my turn. Next group. Right Sir. Right. It's okay. Unarmed defense against a sword. This time, the one who is attacked by the sword will not even have the luxury that I have.
reach it over. One of the uh, points you could have you could have taken away from that demonstration is that even though the odds were terribly against the unarmed person, where there's a will, there is a way. Okay. Um, next group, you'd be surprised how useful the belt that is wrapped around your waist your waist can be. Watch carefully. Wow, who could have thought a belt could be used so effectively, huh? Um, our last category prior to the kicking department is the surprise that I alluded to earlier. There will be no prisoners taken here. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, when they do these finishing holes, 
doesn't look as big as some of the punching and kicking, but people pass out or they die from these hands. Uh, they have to stop when they slap, but when they apply them, your head starts to get dizzy, your eyes fog up, and if you're not careful when you do these things, you can seriously injure something, you can fracture larynxes or cause brain damage. Watch carefully. If you don't take your attacker out with a punch or a quick, a kick like that, you will end up very quickly on the floor, on the ground, in a situation very similar to what you see. I believe it goes something like this, quid pro quo. All right, our very last category happens to be one that highlights the kicking aspect of Hapkido, okay? Hapkido, as I alluded to earlier, is a Korean martial art. One of the main identifiers or definers of a Korean art can be said to be kicking, okay? And as we had discussed earlier, Hapkido is the art of coordinated power. The kicks that you are about to see require exactly that. You must be able to coordinate your entire body into a harmonious and well-timed unit that executes itself in, in a kicking form. You will see five of them. The first one I will identify after they come out. Okay, next. Woo! Ah! 
Okay, flying side kick using one leg as the kicking leg. Gentlemen. For at least some of us, that kicking height is over our heads, just to give you some perspective on that. The next kick you will see, the second of five, is a jumping front kick with their feet apart. So the visual will be two undesired folks that are harassing your loved ones in a bar or other public place that happen to be just this far apart. attention you would see that the striking angle on that previous kick would have attacked the chin or so upward motion this next kick titled a scissors kick same type of situation same type of target different angle of attack these two gentlemen can strike three targets before their feet hit the ground. Right here, we have a taker, a challenger, okay? We need Mr. Buck, please. Sir! Let's see if he can pull it off, huh? Remember now, it only works if he makes contact, an effective contact, before any of his flying feet touch the ground. I think you will find very entertaining. The first one 
will be very similar to the first one you saw, except this time the kickers are going to try and keep both feet together before they make contact with the target. That is to say they have no support below them while they're kicking. Like the first one, they had one leg they could support while the other one kicked. In this case, that is not so. Contact will be made by both feet at the same time. What do you think? Can we do it? I think so. Let's give him some support. One more time. Our last kick, I believe. OK. Flying roundhouse kick is what we call this. If you guys um, want to test out how difficult this may be, at your leisure, just try and pick one foot up and come across in a roundhouse formation with, and remember that when you do that, you have one leg on the ground, okay? This case, there won't be any feet on the ground. Mr. Gannon will be totally in the air, and Mr. Kovacs should be on his back. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, can I get a volunteer from the audience? I don't know, do we have a volunteer? Right there, this young man, yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> Just never good enough, is it? <laughs> okay. Both feet in the air, kicking simultaneously in a roundhouse position. Watch carefully. Not only did he accomplish his task, but he remained on his feet. Unfortunately, the representation that we would have liked from the children's classes were not possible today. However, I think that our one special participant did quite a good job and deserves a warm thank you from you all. Mr. Schwartz? OK, 
Okay, demo team out. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? A big hand, I think.